I've been a football fan for 50 years. Well, that's because I'm 50 years old. But my favorite football team has always been the Miami Dolphins. Now, I was born in New York. I came down here at the parents when I was about 10. And uh, didn't never, never went to my first football game until 1983 when I saw the Miami Dolphins play the Los Angeles Raiders in the old Orange Bowl. Well, the Dolphins lost that game. That's when I quickly fell in love with the football team. Now, when it comes to baseball, I love my New York Mets. Yeah, I know. I'm still a glutton for punishment. But when it comes to football, I got to go with the, with the Miami Dolphins. I've always loved the team, although they haven't loved me lately. But you got to have some fun with it. One day, destiny will shine upon us. And when she does, I'm going to tell you, I was there all along. The 1984 Miami Dolphins. This team was my favorite Dolphins team of all time. Now. I can't say I saw the 1972 team because, well, I was about three years old when they played football, and I don't know much about football at that time. And again, I don't know much about football now. Hmm. Uh, the 1984 Miami Dolphins is my favorite football team. This team was just absolutely loaded. It didn't win the Super Bowl, and this year is 2019, and we're celebrating the 25th anniversary of the, a the 1984 AFC champion Miami Dolphins. So. This is an introductory video to let you know that I'm going to be replaying the 1984 season playing the Dolphins. I thought I'd open up and I thought I'd take a look at the, let you see the uh, 84 schedule. This schedule, okay, is actually pretty interesting. This year, the 84 Dolphins played the NFC East division. And at that time, remember, there were only three divisions in the NFL. Uh, the 84 Dolphins start uh, the season on the road against Joe Theismann and the Washington Redskins. The New England Patriots then come to town against against Tony Eason. Got to go against Buffalo, Joe Ferguson. wonder if that name rings a bell. The Indianapolis Colts then come down here. Miami then has two road games against the St. Louis Cardinals and the Pittsburgh Steelers. The Houston Oilers come to town. Then they go to New England, home against Buffalo, at the New York Jets. Then they host Philadelphia. They go to San Diego, and then they have the New York Jets, the Los Angeles Raiders at Indianapolis and Dallas. The Raider game was the Jet game actually is not the Raider, but the Jet game actually is special because I was actually at that game in 1984 when the Dolphins won that game 20 to 19 and one heck of a game. And let's say Uwe von Schaum, in my opinion, made one of the best kicks he ever made because Schaumann really just couldn't kick. I, I don't know. What's so special about the 1984 Dolphins? Well, how about, well, Dan Marino? Let's see, 5,084 yards passing, 40, uh, 48 touchdowns. He only had 17 interceptions. He was only sacked 13 times. That's because the Miami Dolphins' offensive line was just unbelievable. Okay? When you deal with an offensive line with players such as, oh, well, let's have a look at him. You know, we'll, we'll get them in a minute. But, you know, but Marino, just unbelievable. The best quarterback in NFL history, never to win a championship. If anybody else can say something more than another quarterback in that state in that status, I just don't think you can. Okay, he is the goat of non Super Bowl winning quarterbacks. I know, kind of a kind of a testy title, but hey, sorry Dan. Take a look at the running backs. Where well, you have running backs like uh, Woody Bennett, Tony Nathan, Drew Carter, Pete Johnson, Andre Franklin. Uh, Tony Bennett, uh, 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 Woody Bennett actually ran for 600 yards, and Tony Nathan about 558. You can tell that they didn't run the ball much. But then again, Don Shula felt that, well, if you're, when you got a quarterback like Dan Marino kind of fell into your lap in the 1983 draft, uh, I just don't see how you, 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 you need to pass. I think you'll, or not being the run, I think you'll be pass, I think you'll be passing most. But Nathan was still a very capable uh, running back. Okay, I mean, and, and then was Carter. Carter had 495 yards on the ground. He had an average of five yards a carry. So, you know, that, that's not, that's pretty good. You know, five yards a carry. So every get in the ball, often we should be getting first downs. Wide receivers? Well, that was the, that was the, um, that was the strength. Um, oh, I missed a player there. I see. I'll have to take care of that. Uh, let's see. Mark Clayton, Mark Duper, the Marx brothers. Yeah, it was all about those two. Nat Moore, Jimmy Cephalo, uh, William Jensen, Dan Heflin, and actually not a bad tight end combination with Bruce Hardy, Dan Johnson, and uh, Joe Rose. I mean, this was this was actually a pretty this was a very good receiving core, and yet they were just uh, 
unbelievable. They were just excellent. I mean, Tony, uh, Mark Clayton caught 18 touchdowns. Duper caught eight of them. Yeah, and if you look at the yardage, you'll see that there was, you know, 1,300 yards and 1,300 yards. Matt Moore had 573 yards. It's just really just amazing how well this, uh, uh, this wide receiver core was. Offensive line, well, I don't care what anybody says. You can talk about Jeff Saturday all you want. Dwight Stevenson is the best center in NFL history. 10, blo 10 plus in block, 10 plus in run, 10 plus in pass, 10 plus in durability. Uh, Dwight Stevenson played pretty much every down. Uh, yeah, he was the best center in NFL history. Okay, he, he starts on my all-time NFL team, Dwight Stevenson starting at center. Okay, there's just a, a Hall of Famer best. I don't care. You know, you can say what you want about Jeff Saturday of the Colts or whatever. Okay. You know, Dwight Stevenson was the best center. Pretty good, uh, pretty good line, pretty good uh, lineup and uh, tackles and uh, John Geisler and green. And uh, this was a, this, this, the thing about this offensive line, they kept Marino off the, uh, off the turf pretty much. Defensively, I introduced to you the 1984 killer bees, Bob Baumhauer, Doug Betters, Kim Bo Camper, you know, Barnett, Benson. Uh, this, this, it, was a pretty, it was a pretty decent defensive line, okay? Uh, the 3-4, I believe the 3-4 defense, which was more used on this team, and the 4-3. I mean, if you want to have Baumhauer, uh, Betters, and maybe Bo Camper, uh, Bo, Bo Camper start. I mean, you, you can run it that way. I mean, I'm probably going to utilize the 3-4, although I'm still a fan. I'm more of a fan of the 4-3 defense. Linebackers, oh, a couple more Bs in there. Bowser, Bob Brudzinski, uh, Jay Brophy, and, of course, this guy here, who was probably the, the captain of the 84 defense, A.J. Dewey. And, by the way, New York Jets, A.J. Dewey scored Intercepted another pass and brought it back for a touchdown. Uh, do we remember? Do, do do we remember that game? Yeah. Well, we, we we do remember that game, right? I'm sure we do. Okay. To all you Jet fans, stick it. Um, another another heck of a, a pretty good uh, linebacking core there with Dewey, Bowser, Brzezinski. Pretty good. Pretty good. Uh, defensive backs. Two more Blackwoods, two more B, Keller B's, the Blackwood brothers, and, of course, Mike Kozlowski, not a bad safety in his own right, could do the job. Corners, yeah, Don McNeil and William Judson. Ray Lankford could come in there as well. Fulton Walker could play the position, and William Sowell. Uh, the, th the thing about um, the Dolphin defense, it was supposed, it really was a bend, kind of don't-break defense, but they could give up the points. That's the thing about the, 80, about the, the defense. Killer B's defense, yes, but it was not invincible. So I know if I'm going to play this 84 team, it's going to, it's going to be, it could be pretty tough uh, defensive, defensively. Uwe Von Schaumann was the kicker. Reggie Roby, probably one of the best punters in NFL history. Yeah, give Ray Guy, you know, and whatever. But Von, uh, Reggie Roby was one of the best punters ever. He was an awesome punter. He averaged 44 yards a punt that year. Uh, he, he, he blasted him. Plus, remember, Reggie Roby, when he, most punters are usually, Okay, kind of, kind of come off the ground when they kick the ball. Reggie Roby had his foot planted when he kicked. He did not punt. He did not jump off the ground when he punted. So Reggie Roby was just uh, amazing. So uh, you definitely, definitely have to go. Definitely have to go with that. So we take a. So what does the 1984 season have to bring? Well. Besides taking a look at the divisions, which we already know we see here, and Dan Marino did lead the league in passing rating, and of course, well, there are some, and behind him was some bench warmer by the name of uh, uh, Montana or something. It pro probably, he'll probably never amount to anything, that guy, whoever he was. He'll, pro he'll probably just be, uh, he'll be a bench warmer the rest of his life. Joe Montana, yeah, just, just, a, just a nobody, really. Uh, there's your boy, Eric Dickerson, uh, 2,100 yards rushing, uh, you talk. You want to talk about? He was the new orange juice. Okay, he was the new juices loose. Pretty much at that time. Look at some of those names. Look at some of those names in this list here in 1984. Marino, Montana, Eason, Lomax, Steve Barkowski from Atlanta, Theismann, Dan Fouts out of San Diego, Dave Craig, Seattle, Gary Danielson, Detroit. Look at the rushing. Look at look at the look at the rushers there. Walter, the sweetness, of course, is there. Walter Payton, John Riggins, Tony Dorsett, Marcus Allen. Okay, you know Gerald Riggs. You know. 
James Wilder receiving. Oh yeah, there's Art Monk. Yep, that's all he all Monk did. Yes, people. Art Monk just caught another pass for a touchdown. Ozzy Newsom from Cleveland. Yeah, of course. You know, you know John Stallworth, uh, Steve Largent. And the funny thing is, is that Mark Clayton is the tenth player on that list. Just look at the players that were ahead of him. Uh, amazing. It really is. It, it really is. So I'm, I'm just amazed. I'm just amazed with the sacks. And look, then we go to the defense. Oh yeah, Mark Gastineau and the New York Jets sack exchange. Ugh. Uh, that 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 that, de that defense was just a terror. That was a terror. Richard Dent in Chicago. You know Merriweather at Pittsburgh. And inter and inter you know Snell at Pittsburgh and interceptions easily in Seattle. You know it just and that, it really amazing how. Uh, amazing! Ama it was a, just an amazing uh, group of players there in uh, 1984. So uh, that's what I'm going to do. So this is just a short introductory video to introduce the season. Uh, I'm going to be trying to get my games in maybe on Saturdays and so maybe Saturdays or or maybe not Saturday. Saturdays. Saturdays got to watch college football. So maybe on Fridays I'll be doing that. Um, if you want to look at the upcoming games and take a look, you'll see that the uh, first week here's the first week of the season for week one. Um, we see the Miami Dolphins have to play the Washington Redskins at RFK. Uh, we're going to be utilizing 1984 rules, so no two-point conversion. Uh, no two-point conversion. The uh, kickoffs, the, 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 uh, be the rules that are in today's rules are not going to be used. We're going to play uh, 1984 football. Because if we play nineteen, if we play twenty nineteen football, uh, we all we know that these these replays are going to be skewed. So, so our first game up will be the Miami Dolphins versus Washington, and uh, we will see there. So probably next week I'll probably do that. Take a look at some of the uh, games coming up in that. Let's see uh, what Kansas City at Pittsburgh. Uh, it just a uh, good matchup there. San Francisco goes to play Detroit. Uh, New England's at Buffalo. Philadelphia plays the Giants in their rivalry. Uh, the Jets go play the Colts. Uh, San Diego's in Minnesota. Uh, Dallas plays the Rams. I mean, this is it's a this should be this should be a lots of fun. So, uh, once again, I want to thank you for watching the video and uh, look forward to hopefully uh, enjoying this doing the season here. I'm gonna try to get up to it. So, uh, the next time we next time will be week one. It will be the Miami Dolphins versus the Washington Redskins. Until then, this is RJL five one eight saying good night, everybody.